thanks again for being with us for Your Town TV for the Arts of the Answer segment. And our episode today is all that jazz. And we have with us right now Kathy Rivera from the Orchestra in the Schools program. I am a great big fan of the whole entire thing. And Kathy, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for your invitation. This is a real exciting time of the year for us because, of course, this is when all the kids come back to school it's in their respective schools. Yeah. And all the parents are trying to line up their after school activities. And we are one of those activities and we will be holding auditions for advanced orchestra and then encouraging all children of any age from grades 3 through 10 to consider signing up for our program as one of their after school activities. That is brilliant and I know it's such a great experience for them and they, you take them through a lot of processes and you get them from I don't know to being really proficient in a really pretty short period of time. So Kathy, um, you're a board member. Can you talk us through uh, what made you decide to take a leadership role in this program? What drew you in to do more? Well, one of the most important key ingredients was that I was approaching retirement from my last uh, professional work, which was a neurologic music therapist. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I worked in a, a private practice here in the Monterey Bay oh, area. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and married to that, uh, is the pos is the reality that my granddaughter was participating in orchestra in the schools, oh, yeah. and I knew what a great program it was, yeah, and and saw her enjoying that. Um, and then finally, as I started attending uh, these performances and seeing how it was working into her uh, school life, it reminded me of my own oh. childhood school life, and um, as a product of oh, I'd say mid-century America, uh, the last century, yeah. uh, when I was going to elementary school, any fourth grader um, who had an interest in learning mm -hmm. to play an instrument mm -hmm. could just sign up, yeah. and they were handed one, and during your school day, you were instructed on how to play that instrument, yeah. and then the, the orchestra or band teacher got you together, and you formed these music groups, and we had performances. It was marvelous and available to everyone. That was the normal <laughs> way back then and so as you know there is a huge dip between um, 2000 and 2012 or so when there is there is hardly anything for anyone and that's what we are all collectively working on now is restoring that that new normal. So, so we really really appreciate your leadership in that way. Well, absolutely, and it is our primary purpose for existing, is um, what our mission statement, inspiring success for all children mm -hmm. through music, just like in the old days. Yeah. Um, you know, music and performance music is not for every child, and neither is playing football. Yeah. But um, most uh, school programs still have um, sports programs, and unfortunately too many schools um, don't have uh, an organized music program that I experienced when I was going to school all those One years of the things, ago. right, maybe not in the exact same way. Right. Luckily, we can say it's coming back. It's coming back. But we still, at the Arts Council, we're really conscious of it's coming back and we're very uh, much watching and being a part of the response to like, we need to make it sure, I like how you say everybody, because that's definitely what we're, we're really passionate about, really just everybody. But we're also super interested in that notion that you're talking about a proficiency. That um, as we, what we find, and, and, and you probably know this in, in a way that's much more sophisticated than my awareness, but what I keep finding and what we keep finding generally is that as, as kids develop, or, or anybody really, develop that creative mastery, they're also building their self-confidence, they're building their capacity, certainly in music, they're building their capacity to listen. And what's also really cool to me about in the orchestra, they're building the capacity to step up and step back, to mm. be the star for a minute and then to come back. And that's really magical too for kids and when you think about how much they're gonna have to be in teams as they get older. It's the new normal yeah. for work environments. That's is to learn thinking. to be able to uh, work in a, a small group and also how that small group fits into a large organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, orchestra training is perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me more about the orchestra in the schools. Um, do kids have to pay to be a part of that? 
We do uh, charge a tuition. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very modest uh, about the about the cost of going to a yoga class <laughs> each week. That's cute. Um, and uh, so to put it in perspective of other household expenses, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we get in seventy two um, actual or twenty seven. I'm sorry, uh, actual um, um, rehearsals uh, as we go through the school year. And that's and, amazing. Two and, hours is great. And yeah, it's in intensive and yet. One of the things that really attracted me to uh, James Paletti's organization, yeah. he's the art artistic director, yeah. is he um, can put an instrument in the hands of a third grader who has never held that instrument before yeah. and has absolutely no, no idea what those little squiggles yeah. on the page are <laughs> uh, that, that are uh, composed music. And um, he makes it easy. He makes it very non-threatening. Yeah. And he makes it fun. That's amazing. Huh? And uh, really uh, for the after school programs that are available, um, ours is the only one that really takes these kids from the very beginning. Oh, that's and We don't exclude uh -huh. anyone. Yeah, there yeah. is no, I mentioned the auditions, yeah. that's for the advanced orchestra. Uh -huh, that, uh -huh. That's going to be for our kids who have been in the program two or three years, maybe four years. And it's a placement it's issue. It's a placement right. issue, yeah. right. And maybe perhaps new kids move into the area and they are already quite proficient yeah. on their instrument. Well, a beginning class wouldn't be uh, appropriate for them. Yeah. So there's really something for everyone, grades 3 through 10, in our program, and it is affordable. And then we never want to feel that we're leaving any child out because even that modest tuition is uh, too, too much. Uh -huh. So we do offer tuition assistance, and it is handed out uh, according to need yeah. to anybody who applies. That's amazing. That is really, really great. So tell us more about um, the staff. That, so Jim is still uh, teaching? Is right. It? He's the artistic director. Yeah. Uh, he does pinch hit for a teacher <laughs> who might be uh, sick or feeling under the weather yeah. on, on rehearsal day. Um, so he certainly selects all the programming. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then he's constantly evaluating how the group lessons are going so that he picks appropriate music for our performances. You oh, know, is this going to be something okay. yeah. that we have proficiency in enough uh, of the sections to tackle? Um, he is just the consummate pro yeah. uh, at that. Um, then for each uh, musical instrument section, we have a professional instructor. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. uh, very often quite accomplished uh, musicians in their own right, yeah. but also very long experienced teachers especially for this age range. Yeah. So uh, really, uh, for people who are pursuing private lessons already or who have instruction in school mm -hmm. already, this experience is, is really an enhancement. It's almost uh, for the more advanced students who can audition to be in one of our ensembles. It's a chance to get master class level yeah. uh, direction. That's so amazing. Yeah. and. The, um, do you find that uh, because of the process that you use, that your kids are uh, more likely to practice in between? What's what do you? How do you see that? Because I, I see that from, from my experience that as you drive to performance, as you know that that's coming at the end. I find that people, children and adults, tend to work a little harder. <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And you know, I I have been to rehearsals several yeah. times as a, as a board member, um, so I kind of been able to get a peek behind the scenes. And um, our teachers are so um, expert at breaking things down okay. so that yeah. we can yeah. approach them. It might be a difficult piece. Yeah, they're also very expert at pacing the amount of, of rehearsal they're asking for from, you know, make sure you practice this this many times or, oh, or yeah. each day. Very specific. Uh, very, yeah. very specific guidance, especially for the people who don't have any experience. Yeah. Get them started with really good habits. Um, and then start not adding pressure, but adding demand uh -huh. to the performance of the music as the rehearsals march along. Yeah. So it's... Um, but that keeps them interested too, I bet. Absolutely, and at a certain point, we start putting the sections together uh -huh. in those rehearsals as yeah. we get closer. And I can remember as a child the excitement that would come on that day when all the parts got put together yeah, and funny. your one individual part really starts to make sense. Oh, that's what's happening when I'm resting or that's what's happening when I'm playing very softly. That's amazing. So yeah. it's true, the range of skills that 
children's minds develop yeah. in the learning of music and then the art of performance of music yeah. is really very complex. And I'm, I'm backed up by very good educational literature now mm -hmm. and even neurobiology literature yes, sure. <laughs> that shows that your brain changes as you become trained as a musician. Yeah. And lo and behold, not only does your brain change so that you can play an instrument and, and uh, deliver a performance that's very aesthetic and meaningful, but your brain has also been made more available yeah. for language learning, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for writing, for mathematical ca calculation, for executive function, this very complex function, uh, function that our, our brains do to organize things, to make decisions about priorities, all of these very advanced uh, cognitive skills are all honed as a young musician learns to read music and learns to be part of an organization like this. That's been one of my favorite things is to learn um, the neuroscience behind the music education, music, you know, just learning an instrument. Um, there's, there's so, so much there. It's ex just exquisite. So, um, so if somebody wanted to participate, how, what school districts are you active in? We are drawing from the Peninsula area primarily, um, and uh, of course, all school district children in, in Monterey so that's are Murray, uh, Mon Marina, Monterey, and Seaside. Right, and um, um, PG as well. Okay, if they, if they were interested in participating, so Carmel Valley, uh, Carmel Valley. Carmel. Uh, one of our funders is the uh, Carmel Valley Women's Foundation. Oh yeah, they're so wonderful. Yeah, yeah. they are, and and they have helped uh, with the tuition costs for their oh, students that phenomenal. are coming and playing oh, in, that's brilliant. in the orchestra. We also go beyond that, and we invite uh, homeschoolers. Oh great! Who obviously are not going to have uh, a group opportunity in yeah. their educational yeah. experience. Private school children mm -hmm. uh, as well. So um, we are an equal opportunity opportunity. <laughs> that is phenomenal. So, and where do you feel like you're headed? Like when you look out as a board member and you think about where is orchestra in the schools going to be in three years? Do you do you does your board have a sense, or do you even have a sense that you can share with us uh, about <laughs> where you'd like to see it go? Well, one of the things that um, uh, Jim Paletti has. Um, helped cultivate in the seasons that I've been involved has been this ensemble opportunity for our more advanced players. Okay. And not only do they get the coaching within their rehearsal every week for playing, and, and that's a whole other level of playing, yeah. as you may know. Yeah. If you're in a trio or a quartet, there's not a whole section of violins or a whole yeah. section of cellos. You can't lean on. Uh, right. <laughs> you're kind of holding your own in that part. And uh, so there's been a double benefit, or at least a double benefit, yeah. where the children get this opportunity to be coached. They get many more uh, performance opportunities than just playing in the larger or uh, mm -hmm. orchestra. And then we use our young ensemble players as an outreach um, uh, vehicle to reach audiences that maybe aren't coming to us at our two major performances a uh -huh. year. Uh, this would include retirement. Um, facilities. Oh, I was just going to ask you. Yeah, great, great, great. And then uh, community events. So uh, does that mean that if people wanted to connect with you, they could just come to your website or give you a call and say, hey, would you come to our place? Yes, ab absolutely. Um, Wonderful. Our website tries to keep uh, current on listing on, on events that are coming up. Certainly our Facebook page does, so you can find us on Facebook. Okay. Uh, and then we announce uh, our upcoming uh, performances. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like I say, the nice thing about the, the quartet's a little more portable than an orchestra. Yeah. Uh, and we can get them out and about in the orchestra. Um, I know they've played in Seaside. I know they've played in Monterey. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, that's an exciting adjunct to the program yeah. that, that Jim's helped cultivate. Well, and I think that a aspect hopefully is going to grow. One thing on our minds um, today is the Monterey Jazz Festival mm -hmm. and that's w why our theme, all that jazz. And so uh, I imagine that there'll be some of the kids at least who will one day end up on that stage uh, as they develop their own proficiency and mastery and, and creativity, really. Absolutely. I just ran into an alumni of uh, the orchestra, uh, and although he didn't go on to become a professional musician, um, he did talk about what that opportunity meant to him as he was going to school, and he knows well that there are kids who did go on yeah. to play in uh, their high school orchestra, yeah. um, their college orchestra, or perhaps even professional uh, positions. 
But you know, more than cultivating these uh, professional musicians, and, and hopefully we do have a few kids that, that go that, that route, uh, we are creating tomorrow's audiences. Yes, right. And by understanding music, understanding the nuances of it, what makes a great performance, mm -hmm. all of the work that goes into mastering an instrument mm -hmm. to get to a performance level, that person really has a greater appreciation for the arts of all kinds, whether yeah. it's jazz, whether it's uh, orchestral music, whether it's choral music. Um, so uh, we like to feel we're preparing and priming not only for today's jazz yeah. festival attendees, but tomorrow's right. as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your awesome leadership. Is there anything else you want to make sure we know before we have to let you go? Well. Another program that has to do with our longevity into the future has been the establishment of our endowment. Oh, phenomena. And so we have uh, wonderful goals. Uh, we've got it kicked off, and the Community Foundation is helping us in this regard. Um, and we do see, uh, hopefully in the future, that the money proceeding from the endowment, the interest earned, will help relieve us a, a little bit of the year-to-year funding uh, raising for the existence of the orchestra. I have to say, you always want more. But uh, that's because there's so much more to do and so many more, more people. More kids can participate. Yeah, yeah. And so the, <laughs> uh, hopefully, uh, as that fund grows, yeah. it will uh, provide even more opportunities and perhaps an enhancement in, in the program that we can't even anticipate right now. Absolutely, well mm -hmm. thank you so much for your wonderful, wonderful leadership. It's just a great pleasure to meet you and uh, good luck with everything. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just love that program and I'm sure great things are gonna be emerging from all the different aspects of your work. Well thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm.